Okay, here's an important distinction you have to understand. There's a difference between where your mass is, your center of mass, and your pressure. They can be in two totally different places. Like I can get my mass over here and lift my foot out and press it into the ground. I've got my pressure into my trail foot. It's a really big distinction to understand how to, how to utilize ground reaction forces the best because sometimes it could be registering that there's a ton of pressure in the trail foot and yet optically the center of mass of the pelvis has slid forward too far so there's no way you can jump out of the way and spin. So you've got to balance those two things. You've got to understand the difference between pressure and mass and make sure that they stay balanced. What I like to see with the mass is I like the, the pelvis and the, and the rib cage or the upper torso to kind of remain over each other on the way back with not much lateral sway. And then as they recenter, there's a slight separation of the lower body. There's no question in the firing sequence, the lower body goes first, but it does not go whoosh, like this and leave the upper body behind. It peels away slightly, so there's not too much X factor stretch. And then the upper torso now starts to catch up and get back on top of it. So you're really pushing down with your rib cage, really pushing down with your pelvis, really pushing down into the ground with the whole mass. And now the pressure's moving kind of with your mass. You're not leaving it totally behind. And now from here, now they separate as you extend your lead side, as your lead, lead shoulder goes up and back, as you create side bend rotation, uh, rotation and tilt. So make sure you understand the dis distinction between where your center of mass is and where your pressure is. You're going to learn ground reaction forces a whole lot better.